Hi, welcome back to the channel. This is going to be the fourth video in our Thunderbird build. Um, I had a bit of user error on my camera and I got nothing videoed from the last video. So let me get you up to speed on where we're at so far. I have gotten all of step one, which is the engine, step two, which is the tires and wheels. I got step three, which was the interior, and all of step four, which is the chassis. That's what I've got completed so far. And here's what we did. So for step one, I painted the transmission on it, silver, super metal silver, and then the rest of the block, the oil pan, the front cover, all the drives, all the accessories, I did all those in BL3. I also did the intake, I don't know if you can see that or not, but I also did the intake in the uh, sil in the super metal silver. I did the carburetors in carb gold. The distributor cap I did in Cummins beige. The uh, the oil fill tube and the breather cap itself I did in Maltau chrome and chrome valve covers. I painted the fuel rail Maltau chrome also, and then I did black for the fuel hose that runs into the carbs. So that was all pretty easy. And actually on these Thunderbirds, the transmission, the bell housing and the tail shaft are aluminum and the center section's actually steel. I didn't do that, I just painted it all aluminum. Uh, the other thing I did, I'm sure you can see that, is I did all the weathering underneath, which didn't turn out quite the way I wanted to, but it looks good, I'm liking it. I did it with, I did the whole bottom of the chassis in BL2. And then I went over it with some red primer to kind of give it kind of a rusty feel. And then I went over it with some gray and some REL tan. The, I actually did that in REL 1001 to kind of make it look that kind of dirty tanny color they do. But mostly it just looks rusty. <laughs> but it's fine. I mean, you, it, everything still looks great. It's all nice. Then I came back in and I did the painted this, which is tester silver and some black to make it look like they put a new, a new gas tank in it. Rear axles BL2, red primer on the center section. Those are Monroe yellow on shocks. BL2 again on the brackets. Then steel on the on the leaf springs. I sprayed the exhaust system in a chrome paint to make it look like it's stainless steel. Drive shaft steel. I wanted it to look like they bought the car. Tore everything apart to do the lo to lower it and then revamped everything, and then came back in and cleaned it all up, put it all back together properly. So like the transmission cross member that crossed the, the bracket there, all of the front suspension stuff's all BL2. And then um, same thing, did the, did the same weathering on the firewall where it sticks out of the body, left the rest of it just in the BL2. I painted the brake, the, the master cylinder, the booster, I painted that just steel. Um, then we got the interior done, like I said, carpeted it off-white carpeting, did the interior in our interior pearl, really nice off-white color, bright enough to look white, looks really good against that dark, the dark Alfa Romeo color, but not quite so harsh that straight white would have made it look. Detailed out all the aluminum parts, got the details on the dash, they come with a the gauges are all decals. I don't know if you can see that or not. I guess you kind of can. And yeah, got those done. I did all the rest of the chrome work with the Maltel pins. So that's where we're at so far. Um, and like I said earlier, that's steps one through four. I just did the factory tires and wheels, or they're the, sorry, they're the custom tires and wheels. I didn't do the factory ones and just follow the directions, they went together fine, everything's on there, looks good. Uh, so that's all that, we'll put that aside. And I'll tell you what we're gonna finish up with. So obviously we have a lot of the chrome work to finish up, we have some spots left on the, on the engine bay area, we got the radiator, we got some cooling system parts a couple little miscellaneous bits there. We'll get those glued in. Most of those actually glue on here. Uh, I still have the air cleaner to glue on. Just flat white for the fill filler element. 
painted the bottom of it with a little bit of chrome just so it looked chrome on both sides. That just needs to go on. I'm going to do that probably almost last. Got the strut tower brace done. I'm not going to do that yet because it actually glues on to that little indent right there. And then it glues on to those two spots there. So, and I guess it wouldn't be a strut tower brace. It'd be a shock. It'd be where the springs are. Just be the inner brace. I don't know what they call those actually. <laughs> um, did a little bit of chrome work with the Maltow pen right here. I didn't do the rest of the side because I want to show you how I do those. Include the toning cover with the seat covers with the headrest on there. Um, did have a problem that we're gonna that we have to we have to fix custom I guess you want to call it so this is the mirror they give you uh, which is in addition to being hard to hold it's uh, it's just not good you don't know if you can see that or not but like it's got a bunch of sink marks in the mirror face and then the back's just this little round rod that sticks out of it. And I don't know if that mounts to the windshield or to the windshield frame. But anyway, I don't like it. So I was digging around. I was, sorry, I was surfing around on the internet looking at some stuff. And I saw that you can buy custom, custom rear view mirrors. And... They make them that just stick. They make them that just go right onto the dash. So I found one in my stash that I kind of like. So I'm just going to modify the back of it. And then I'm just going to glue that right on there. And then the side mirrors, I don't know who, I don't know who got the okay to mold the side mirrors the way they did. But they, um, ah. Both of them were garbage. They were, they had this big mold, part of the mold that came through on the face. And when I tried to sand them off, they both broke off of the base. Oops, I didn't need that anyway. <laughs> anyway, but so they didn't, they, I, I just couldn't use them. They were, they were both broken, I couldn't use them. So I, again, I know from personal experience with real cars that you can just go buy pretty nice mirrors. So I found this one out of my Bronco kit. I'm going to put that just on the driver's side. So that's going to go right there. So we're going to do that. Um, it's got a couple other items to take care of. And instead of talking about them, I'm going to put all this stuff up. And we're going to start working on this thing. Okay, so we'll start by putting the, the radiator in. Just a little bit of glue there and just glued it right in. That was simple enough. Then you have... A little pen right on the radiator and then you got a this black hose that comes up right there that just pin just connects to the radiator hose and the radiator hose comes up to the bottom right there on the I don't know if you could see that or not there's a little nub right there and that just goes right there so easy peasy we got it in all right so that completes that and then um, like I said we've got a couple other items that are going to go on the body I kind of want to get all this worked out first before I start gluing the chrome and stuff together I know I kind of skipped ahead there because the radiator and stuff's all step six But it all goes in before the air, before the body goes on, so it's it really doesn't matter. So just a little bit of glue on that. Ok, 
Okay, and then that goes in just like that. And then I painted the washer bag. I did mine red. I've seen them black, I've seen them kind of a tan color. I seen the red one, really liked that. I wanted to get away from all the black underneath the hood. Yeah. Okay. Okay, just got to do this by hand. Oh, okay, that goes on kind of one way. Ha, huh, there we go. Okay. So there's all that then. And then I guess just the battery and we'll be done with all the underhood stuff. I'm actually really happy with how they set this thing up. It's got everything kind of Everything kind of has its place and everything has like really positive mounting points. Okay, that's supposed to kind of slide in there on an angle, I guess. Yep, there we go. Okay, yeah, we got it now. Um, again, I don't know if you can see it or not, but I did all the little caps on here in red, flat red, to mimic those battery toppers they sell. So on the real cars, you can buy an, a regular battery, and they got a little plastic piece that looks like that, so it looks like an old school battery. It's kind of trying to mimic that look. I mean, it's it's close. It's fine. I mean, <laughs> it's just a model. It's It's okay. Okay, and now we are to the fun part. And this is actually the part that I'm excited about because I really like how they made this. Oop, first, let me, uh, let me clean this up a little bit first. I didn't realize I hadn't done that. All right, I probably could have showed that. I just took the fine sanding pad and just kind of run it over that so I wasn't gluing onto the chrome. Yeah, it looks good underneath. Okay. So. So they got two little pins there. And that just clips right on there. And that is just beautiful. It sits in there real nice and square. <laughs> yeah, I love it. And on that, I'm actually going to glue that in with just regular plastic glue ah okay well then we'll do it this way Okay, that is in there. That is beautiful. I'm loving it. That is great. Um, so on the side windows, they mount real nice onto the onto the windshield pillar. 
So that's going to be my next. It's going to be my next step here. And I plan to glue everything together and then glue the windshield in. Glue the windshield and the side windows in. I actually have a, a reasoning for doing that. I'll show you when I when I get to that step. a little different. Okay, perfect. So, yep, you can see how good those things look on. Ah, crap, I broke it. Okay, um, I'm gonna do this off camera because I don't want you to watch me fumble with this for 40 minutes. And like always, the minute I turn the camera off, it decides to stop fighting me. So, I got both, of, both the wing windows in and they match up perfectly and look good. And, the windshield's glued in nice, the frame's glued in nice. So next up we'll be doing the we're doing the glass. And we will be finishing off the body. Basically we'll finish off step five. We just gotta glue the windshield in, which I already have out and cleaned up. Um, you know, I know I've talked about this before. Just make sure it's nice and cleaned up and there's nothing sticking out or rough or anything and it'll glue right in. And I know from test fitting it on the frame earlier, it's gonna work fine. So I'm probably not gonna show that because I really don't need to. I've already explained it before and it's just glue it on there with the, with the glass glue and that's all that is. So I'm gonna finish that up and then I'll come back. We'll pop the body on and we'll do the rest of this and we'll be done. All right, so um, we got the windshield in, we got the two side windows in. They went in great. I got a little bit of a fingerprint right on the very bottom edge of it, but we're gonna hide that with the, uh, with the windshield wipers right here. So again, like everything else on this kit, it goes together really nicely. Uh, I got a little bit too much glue on that, that's fine. There we go. See, just lift those up, can't even tell. <laughs> okay, so we are now officially done with step five. And I also fixed my rear view mirror, so now I got a custom one on the dash. How cool is that? <laughs> custom stuff for a custom car, you gotta love it, huh? Okay, so now the way the body goes on is pretty cool. It clips in the back here, and then there's two little knots, there's two little nubs on the front here. There's one here and one here, and they clip into the body right here and right here. And then those just clip into the back here. So it looks like... Um, okay, so, okay, let me tinker with this for a minute and we'll figure it out. Um, but first, we have the grill. So what I did was, I did a black wash on the grill to make that stand out a little lot better. And then I painted the turn signals with the with a really super thinned out white paint, just to make those look more like they were that kind of opaque 
they're that white translucent color that they used to use on those and then we have to glue the headlights on so that's what I'm going to start on here now they give you different they give you different versions of the headlights they have the regular like factory stock ones which is what I'm going to use And then they also give you these uh, clear ones that I guess are supposed to be like the old 60s Lucas style. Um, I don't know. I don't. I wasn't really drawn to the Lucas styled ones. So, like everything, just grab this, kind of clean up the little nub off of it. Okay, and then one thing I notice that people will do if they're not paying attention is when they put the headlights in, they don't get them in square and they don't get them in the way they're supposed to be. So let me show you a little something on this. Hmm. Okay. This has been apparently sitting for a little while because it it just doesn't want to work. Okay, let me turn off the camera and I'll fix this. I'll be back in a second. All right. Sorry about that. I hadn't used that thing in a little bit and it was really gummed up. Actually, I ended up taking a drill and had to micro drill out the end of that thing. So I just. Put that on around the edge and then always take these and then the headlights always have, I don't know if you can see that or not, they have like a one line that runs across that should run perfectly horizontal and then all those little tiny lines that run up and down are your little vertical lines, they should be they should be up and down like that. You don't want the, you don't want the headlight with that horizontal line like tilted over or down or straight up and down. You want it across them. So I'm not going to show the rest of those. I mean, you've seen how I did that one. It's all pretty much the same. So we got to put the, got to put the push bar on here, and that's going to go on. Okay. So. You know, like everything, kind of test fit them, see how they're going to go on, figure out how you're going to glue them. Okay. Oh, yeah, there we go. Yeah, that's cool. Okay, yeah, that looks really good. I'm really happy with that. Okay, so again, I'm going to go off screen for a second, get the rest of those headlights put in, get that put aside. Then we'll work a little bit on the tail lights because we're kind of running out of stuff to work on here. <laughs> and then we'll be, then we'll finish this thing up. Okay, so after three days of gluing, clamping, and cursing, I got the car fitted to the chassis. <laughs> um, yeah, I had some issues. I had to clamp everything down. The front end was pushed way down. The, the body didn't want to line up on the top here, so I had to squish it all down and get it all glued onto the firewall, but I got it done, and it turned out okay. Um, while, while I was doing that, I popped a lot of parts off and had to replace a bunch of stuff. So I just came in and decided to finish up all the underhood stuff real quick. So I put in the, the shock, the spring tower brace, shock tower brace, I guess they call it. I put, I had to start with the, I had to put that in and then I put the air cleaner on so I could get this 
to line back up I had to trim off a bunch of the hose and make it fit and then I also had to break the also had to break off the the uh, the water jug I had to pull that off and push it down if you glue it the way the model want the way it the way it's molded in it'll push it up too high and then the hood won't close so anyway I got all that taken care of as you can see it's looking really good now the one thing I didn't do was I skipped out on the heater hose and the air conditioning hoses I just did not like the way they looked they're just molded in there like that I mean they look okay I just didn't like the way they looked in the engine bay I thought it kind of cluttered it up and I wanted a little cleaner than that so I didn't do them um, so that's it so we got all that stuff done all the other parts went in so we're done with step six which moves us on to seven which means we are like super close to getting this thing done um, so on the front bumper I didn't use a license plate holder because I think it looks a lot better just cleaned out like that just cleaned up like that uh, that's my preference um, did all the chrome come back went over it with the Maltel chrome pen I'm gonna show you a little trick on that here in a minute um, let's get the bumpers glued on I also took and put the cool license plate on it I don't know I guess you can see that really good actually that looks good so yeah it looks good too so so just got some glue in the cap and I like how they did this the grill and the bumper because it just mounts right onto that edge of the body and it fits on there nice and square that's really good I really really like that so I'm gonna come in and put put the glue on here so yeah on a serious note I had a lot of fit issues with that chassis um, once I got the interior in it didn't you got to be super careful with it and I didn't realize that so it was the door panels were pushed out a very tiny bit which was giving me a little bit of an issue and then um, the, the pan I guess was a little warped so it made the entire front end stick down like the end of those frame horns were like way down here and it just it just kind of turned into a it's kind of a one thing after another sort of deal and just had to come back and just work on it bit by bit but like I said I got it and it looks good and you can't complain about that okay so yeah I'll just get this all taken care of we're gonna be done this thing is just gonna be beautiful I was I was kind of dry fitting some of the parts earlier and man it looks good let me set this down for a second okay so kind of exactly the same deal on the back with the back bumper just uh it's a lot more spots to glue so on this so for this one I'm actually going to put it on the body mm. just around where the tail lights actually mount to the body Okay, and then I'm going to do 
I'm going to put the glue right along the back of the bumper where the bumper butts up against the body. just saw me do that okay let me stop and do this off screen I'm just messing this thing up all right so after a bit of a fight with the chrome I finally got it done the back bumpers on I got the front bumper on everything looks good so we are down to literally the final touches um, so I want to show you a little trick with the Maltel. I use this Maltel liquid chrome. I've shown this on the channel before. There we go. Um, I use the two millimeter tip. You can see it's the bigger one. Then for trim, like along this, along the spear that runs along the top of the car, you can just set it right on top of it if you square it up real nice, and you can just run it all the way down. And that's going to leave just enough chrome on there that's going to leave that edge you can see how you can see how it's you can see how it left it on there now for this thin one i would actually try that with the one millimeter before i tried it with the two millimeter because that's just a little thin, but we can give it a try. Ha! That actually worked a lot better than I thought it was going to. So, yeah, so chrome work's done. <laughs> um, now, with the Maltel chrome, do not touch that. That will just immediately ruin the chrome finish on it. Let it sit for like three four days i found works pretty well and then you can very lightly touch it like after a week you'll be able to jostle the car a little bit without it being a problem but until that dries completely like that just be super careful not to touch that chrome because it will ruin the effect um okay so that leaves us with the antenna and the mirror so let's get this going Now I know from playing with it before that it, that, that antenna kind of goes in, kind of goes in on a, kind of has to be facing a certain way to go in properly. There it is. Okay. Put a little dot of glue on the base of that. There we go. Okay. Now for the mirror. Um, I have to clean that base up a little bit. I thought I already had that done. Sorry. So just that, I mean, that's 
I mean, that's all there is to it. It really wasn't a problem. Little dab of glue on there. Okay, I like that. Square that up, kind of bring it in a little bit. There we go. There we go. It is done. And it looks good. Um, oh, actually, that mirror needs to be squared up a little bit better. There we go. Okay, that'll dry real quick. Tenna looks good. Front end looks good. side turned out perfect looks good underneath underneath the hood passenger side looks good rear bumper looks good cool license plate looks good on there yep that's it it is done and it looks fantastic um, now the kit went together fine it fought me at the end with the chassis and I don't like the way the motor mounts, but other than that, it, I mean, it's fine. It had some fitment issues, just a few things that needed to be needed to be worked on and stuff, but nothing major. Kind of, kind of, you know, every model has its thing that it fights you on, and this one did too. So it was easy enough to repair. Um, if I was doing a review on it, I'd probably only give it like a six out of ten. So. It was a good kit, looks really good. I know the guy I'm gonna give it to is gonna love it, and that's that's what I'm after. That's that's the prize there. So that's it for this video. Um, we do are offering a new a new discount code. So if you use scale finishes 10 at your next order at scale finishes with this, you'll get 10% off your order. And that's about it for this video, and I will see you on the next one. Thank you.